with a promise that I'm going to be brief. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you for attending today. When I started uh, the, the conference and I spoke at the start, um, I, I made it very clear that my first round of thanks was to you as the delegates, and, and that stands. Th this event for me and the team has been remarkable, and remarkable that it's actually happened. Um, but we've put down a marker, and we've put down a marker to discuss many issues, and as Irini highlights, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of data still to be gathered. But a united front uh, and working together really is the way ahead. It's also highlighted that human rights to see applies across the entire maritime environment for all the stakeholders here, for all of the issues. Um, and it's not absent in any part of the maritime environment. We've also highlighted today what I call the soft power approach, the approach of civil society, the changing of le legislation, the changes of policies. And if nothing else, we've brought together uh, a number of people. I've been privy to uh, a number of conversations where connections have been made today, which I hope for those organizations will grow. Education is key, and that's throughout the supply chain, through from academia um, to, to Generation uh, Z as it, is, uh, as it is now. And awareness, we will continue, along with our partners, uh, to produce publications objectively and factually delivered um, to fill the gaps until we can get, as Parosha says, better legislation. My warning to you, there's no space here, um, and this is my personal opinion, for isolated approaches um, or protectionism. Uh, we absolutely must work when we can together um, and barriers need to be knocked down between organizations, associations, and, and perceptions need to be managed because of course perception is truth as opposed to truth being truth. The threats to the welfare organizations that have been highlighted today as well as the benefits need to be addressed. And I would say that those threats need to be removed very quickly. And that can be done by uniting against those threats. There's also got to be deconfliction on our work streams because nobody likes doubling up on work. And indeed, in London International Shipping Week in 2015, uh, I made the suggestion where we called for effectively a, a welfare and civil society roundtable. Shipping industry has it. International Chamber of Shipping, BIMCO, Intermanager. Is that right? Is Cuba here still? No, no, it's in cargo into Tanko, if, um, and I stand to be corrected. There's no reason why there can't be an NGO, civil society, and welfare organization roundtable. Again, unity in strength and strength in depth. The Human Rights at Sea lexicon is developing, as we said right at the start. Three years down the line, it's becoming common language. As I say, it's not just in civil society, it's not just within the shipping industry, it's now within the military environment as well. And I, I said without, uh, and no jokes, when my work is done, my work is done. The charity does not stay on and stay open when human rights at sea becomes that common language. And I just want to finish up with, I mean, there's a number of quotes. I've written many down, as I'm sure you have. But uh, Neil Greenberg's... Um, well, one of Neil Greenberg's statements, I won't say I'm fine anymore because that might actually reflect my true state of mind, um, but post-traumatic stress disorder. I was struck by the fact that he said that, and I quote, the impact of junior leadership on reduced in PT PTSD is huge. So education, invest in our young leaders. Libby Woodhatch said we need to think about the people, not the fish. And Phil Bloomer said, Broadly, the maritime industry is a laggard in terms of human rights. And that's telling because it's not me standing up and saying it, it's people at the, the top end of their games saying it from a number of organizations. So I spoke about a call to action, and I'm gonna stick with that call to action that I first highlighted, and that is application of human rights in the maritime environment at all times and without exception. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to close this conference and adjourn to uh, drinks. Thank you.